Hello, I'm Ariza Gaming, and welcome to the first episode of Sandbox Showcase, where I show how you can solve a problem in Oxygen Not Included with a build that solves it easily and efficiently. So the first problem I'm going to talk about today is oxygen. Your dupes need to breathe oxygen, otherwise they're going to suffocate and die. Uh, you'll have some oxalite to start with that will produce some oxygen, and you'll have some algae that you can run through an algae diffuser or an oxygen diffuser, but eventually you're going to run out. And one of the best sources of oxygen in the long term is the electrolyzer. So this building, what this does is it takes in a kilogram per second of water and it outputs 888 grams per second of oxygen and 112 grams per second of hydrogen. And these come out hot, but the oxygen is there and the water can be renewable due to sources such as cool steam vents. It's a fairly infinite resource, so you're not going to run out of it. You'll just have a certain rate that you can scale up the amount of duplicates that you have in your base to that rate that you have from your water source geysers. So the aim of this build is to use the electrolyzer efficiently and separate out the oxygen and the hydrogen gases, cool them down because they will come out at at least 70 degrees C, and you don't want that in your base. So I've got to clear some space over here and I'll show you what this looks like. Let's actually make this slightly bigger. So you can build this fairly early on. You don't really need to worry about advanced materials too much. And I'll go over some material replacements you can have that make the build slightly better. But you can build this very early if you want to, once you've got all of the appropriate technologies. So what I like about this build is it fits very well into the four tile high room structure. Often your rooms will be four tiles high in this game because that's just the convenient way a lot of buildings fit. So it's nice to have a build that actually fits that sort of regime. So if we unpause it for a second. Yes, drop the sand on the duplicates. <laughs> uh, so first of all, we're going to use some insulated tiles because the oxygen and the hydrogen are going to come out hot and we want to cool down the gases. We want to cool down the gases rather than the water because the gases have a lot less heat capacity than the water. So as the essential build bits in a 3x9 sort of room. So I put some ladders here so you can see how you're, you'd access this with your duplicates um, as you're building it. And I'll just show off the build first and then I'll talk about how you'd actually go about building it, like the sequence of construction. So what we'll do is we'll put some airflow tiles here, put the electrolyzer in this top bit. Now, because the, because the gas has come out at 70 degrees C, you're often going to want to put hot water in the electrolyzer because if you put cold water in the electrolyzer the gas is going to come out hot anyway so there's no real point um, but if you're putting hot water in say condensed from a steam vent that hot water is often going to be 95 degrees c if it's coming out of like a steam turbine outlet so if you're using hot water this building is going to get above 75 degrees c and you're going to want to make your electrolyzer out of a heat resistant material like gold amalgam. Uh, you can find this in the marshy biomes with the thimble reeds, uh, but if you don't have access to those in your asteroids, you may have to make steel for that. Or you can just fill it with cold water. If you fill it with water at 70 degrees C, it won't add any extra heat with these gases, and it will still be cold enough that you can make this electrolyzer out of the more common metals. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the electrolyzer here, and then we're going to cover this in very small quantities of liquids. Now, these could be any liquids you can find that aren't going to boil, sort of between normal room temperature and the operating temperature of the electrolyzer. So you can actually use water for one of these layers. And I'll explain why we're doing this in a minute. But you're going to want a fairly low amount of mass on these tiles. So let's, put, let's go into the liquid overlay. So we'll put one blob here, one blob here. I put about five kilograms here. Um, the amount of mass that you need, if it's too high, it will just straight up flood the electrolyzer and you don't want that. Uh, and if it's too small, the gases that come out of the machine might just push the liquids out of the way or, or delete the liquid. So I would say about five to 10 kilograms per tile is, is pretty good. You can achieve this by using a bottle emptier. You could put that here. You can have a mesh tile here and you can just drop the liquids in. Like you could drop in, like a dupe will go and collect like a 200 kilogram bottle of water with an able auto bottle and a pitcher pump, like this. 
obviously you want a ladder to that. And then what you could do is you could just put a mesh tile here and drop the drop the liquids in like this. Or you can deliver them before you build the electrolyzer with a pedestal in the furniture catalogue. You can get your dupes to bring relatively small bottles over to that. Or you can just build a pedestal here, have them deliver the bottles onto the mesh tile, and then just empty the bottles with a duplicate over that. Or you can actually just deliver the already bottled liquids over to this spot and just empty them on that spot. But I usually do it with the bottle empty, or I like doing it with the bottle empty. So the first liquid will be water. You can you can use water for this. And the second one just has to be any other liquid that won't immediately evaporate. So you can use salt water for this. I wouldn't use polluted ox uh, polluted water because that's going to off gas and produce polluted oxygen, which is not good. Uh, but yeah, you can put salt water in this. Let's just do that for now. No, let's not put liquid salt in this. See? Okay, that's the wrong amount. We want five kilograms. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, now now we flooded this because we've added too much. Just give me a second. So that's why you don't want to add too much liquid because it will just flood the building. But uh, let's put the salt water on the bottom because it will sink to the bottom anyways. And then we'll just put the water on the top. I don't again, I don't know. I'm just going to edit this bit out. Right. So you put the electrolyzer back in. Uh, we put in a liquid that will sink to the bottom, like salt water. Make sure you put in a low quantity of the liquid. And then let's go put a slightly lighter liquid on top. So we'll put some water on there. Again, make sure it's a fairly low quantity, but not too low, that the liquid will just evaporate. So now what we have here is we have all four tiles of the electrolyzer covered with liquid. There's not enough liquid to actually flood this building. That's very important because the gas from the electrolyzer will come out of this tile every time. And normally when the machine is open air, the gases will just spread out randomly. But because all of these liquid tiles are covered up, uh, the gases will actually separate out into this tile and this tile always. So what we'll do is we'll put, a, we'll put an insulated tile here and then the hydrogen will come out the top and the oxygen will come out the bottom through the airflow tiles. And you need to have all four of these tiles covered in liquid because that way um, this tile where the gas comes out won't ever overpressurize. The liquid will always stay on this tile and because the amount of liquid is below the overpressure limit of the electrolyzer it will it will always keep sending the gases out so the machine will never overpressurize. So then we just put the gas pumps in the bottom. Um, again I would just make these out of gold because uh, it will come out hot initially. You will want to cool down the oxygen when you're sending it to your base. You don't need to worry about cooling down the hydrogen. But you definitely want to cool down the oxygen. So I would, I would just make them all out of gold, to be honest. Definitely make the hydrogen one out of gold, or steel if you lack gold. And you'll want one pump up here, because only 112 grams per second of hydrogen is produced. One pump will handle 500 grams per second of gas. So that's fine, but for the oxygen, because it's 888 grams per second, you'll want two pumps to make sure that's fully handled. Okay, um, so then you've got those going there. Now the next thing we'll do is just set up some automation for this whole machine. So there's a few different ways you can do this, but the way I like to do it is I like to have three Atmos sensors. So I'll have one hooked up to this pipe. You can make these all, uh, all out of lead. I'll have uh, this one down here hooked up to the electrolyzer, and they'll have this one hooked up to these two gas pipes. So you can just do it like that. And then what you want to do is you want to set this setting, this pressure high enough that the pipe, the pump is always going to be pumping out a full packet of gas. So I usually set the hydrogen one to above a thousand because that way it can grab 500 grams of hydrogen and there'll still be another 500 left for it to grab. But you'll usually have a, a large amount stored up here, so that's usually, that's usually fine. But this just make, means you're not going to be pumping empty packets because the gas pump is not a very power efficient building. It only moves 500 grams per second of gas and it takes 240 watts. And the aim of this machine to make it super useful is to make it produce more power than it consumes. Because the hydrogen that it produces can all be burned for power using the hydrogen generator. And this is what we're going to use to make this machine power positive so it can just run itself. And that's very important. So, 
You want to make sure these gas pumps are only running when they're full of gas to make sure the machine is efficient enough to power itself. So then similarly for this one, I'd set this one to above 2,000 grams. Uh, because there's two pumps here. And then this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one to send a green signal if uh, below 9,000 grams. And the reason I'm doing this is you, you don't have to do this. What I've done in the past is I've just had like a flip switch where I can just turn the electrolyzer on and off within the building. And I've just let this pressurize to like a ridiculous degree. But I'm going to set this to 9,000 grams so the pressure in here doesn't get above uh, 10 kilograms per tile. So this will mean that all of your water that you're pumping into the electrolyzer will stay in the water tank. And some, sometimes you'll want to just send all of the water you've got, turn it into oxygen and put it in here. But the reason I'm going to do it like this is because I'm going to put a plant in here. We're going to put a, we're going to put a little flower pot in here, not a plant box. We're going to put a little pla uh, flower pot in here and we're going to put a... Buddy bud. You would put a buddy bud in this flower pot. And what this will do is it will produce the floral scent germs. And those will relieve the stress of all of your dupes, and that can be put in your oxygen pipe, and it will send the germs throughout your base. And this this plant will sort of overpressurize at 10 kilograms per tile of pressure. Uh, so if you want to use the floral scent, then use this. Otherwise, you can use a regular light switch instead. Um, you have it like this. But we're gonna keep the uh, we're gonna keep the plant in here for now. So let's remove this and put the the atmosphere sensor back. There you go. Uh, so then there's a few things left. So this is the basic concept of the build. And you can run this off of a single wire if you really want. Um, so you don't even need refined metals for this. So let's just demonstrate how it would work with a single wire. You can just put the single wire up here. Go up here and then you can remove the pitcher pump once you've done with that. Once you drop the liquids in. Seal this off. And then what you can do is you can actually just stick your hydrogen generator on top of it. Like this. <laughs> uh, you might want to make that out of gold amalgam just in case it overheats. But uh, essentially what we'll do is we'll just take the hydrogen and we can just pump it straight in here. We keep the pipe in the insulated tile. It's not going to leak out too much heat. You can insulate this pipe if you want. Uh, that's not a problem either. But yeah, we'll just send the hydrogen straight to this machine and all the excess hydrogen will just be stored in this little bit here. So you just have a very large high pressure stockpile of hydrogen that you can draw from whenever you want more power. Uh, so you don't actually need to set up a storage tank or anything. This will function as the hydrogen storage tank. And if you want extra hydrogen for like a freezer or an anti-entropy thermonullifier or making liquid hydrogen, you can just pump it out of this pipe as well. And then the oxygen you can just send uh, over to your base or wherever. So what I like to do is I like to combine these two pipes into one sort of outlet and then send it out of the bottom. And then you can just you can just send it wherever you want from there. So we can just put it here, put a, put a little vent here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so now the dupes have some oxygen. Uh, so we on towards that. Yeah, that's all hooked up. So the other thing you want to do as well is you want to make sure this oxygen is cool because the oxygen will come out at 70 degrees C. And what I'd recommend for this is that you put in some radiant liquid piping. It can be made out of any sort of metal you want. Lead is the most abundant. It's not very conductive, but it's good enough for what you need. Uh, aluminium is the best, but we'll, we'll just build this out of lead for now. Um, so you can just stick these pipes in here uh, set up a liquid loop going somewhere to keep it cool. Uh, we can connect it up like this. And then you'll just have this be your cooling loop that you cool with, say, a thermo aqua tuner or something. And I'm not going to put that in for now because the cooling, the cooling is uh, a second part of it. But now we're just going to focus on the main bit. But you, you do want to build this pipe in here so that you can actively cool the oxygen gas um, before it comes out. Or instead of doing this, you can just vent the hot oxygen into your base and cool your base with a with a radiant pipe cooling loop instead. So you've got two different options. And then uh, what else is there to talk about? I think I think that's essentially it. I think that's all it takes for this machine to work. 
You will need to jump start it with a manual generator. Just get it running initially. So we could put that just like here. It's only temporary. Connect the wire up here. Your dupes can run on this and then power these pumps. Uh, what I would say is to start, you'll want to vent these rooms. So you could you could set up a little vent here just to start with. And you'll want to pump all the gases out of the rooms. And it's important that you do this after you put the liquid in, because what that essentially does is it separates these two rooms. Um, so this one's they're both currently filled with oxygen, but we want to vent both of these. So if we just let the dupes do their thing, you could run the wheel for a little bit. How are these? Uh, we uh, temporarily to get this running, you just you just uh, set those to the opposite of their power threshold. And then that would eventually vent all of these rooms. Now, because we've got the two pumps down here, it can be quite quick down here. You probably actually want to, you probably actually want two um, manual generators for this. So let's just stick some, yeah, let's just stick another manual generator here. The dupes can run on this for a little bit. Yes, get another guy to run. Get this running properly. So you can see the gas pressure is, is draining pretty quickly in here. It'll drain very quickly up here. And it'll very quickly get to the point where it's in micrograms and then all the gases will just go. So we're going to completely vent this room just to show you how that works. Could actually get a third manual generator in here. Here you go. Yeah, stick a pipe here. So this is just, you need some power to initially vent the room. And you can see this oxygen is going down relatively quickly. It's been about sort of half a cycle in speed 3, so it doesn't take long to vent these rooms at all. And the last bit is always the longest. Uh, but there we go. The room is now vented. So now the room is a complete vacuum. And all we need to do is actually hook up a water source to this. So what I like to do... What I like to do for this is I just like to put liquid pump down here in wherever we're taking the water from and then what I'll do is I will I will send the liquid pipe down here and I'll feed it into the electrolyzer this way and then we can keep expanding this build out this way and none of the pipes will clash with each other so I'll demonstrate that in a minute and we'll just hook up another wire here so the liquid pump takes a bit more power as well but it doesn't um it it it's not going to be running all the time, so overall the machine is still pretty much power positive. So yeah, you can run on this, we can pump some liquid into this. And now what we'll do is we'll flip these settings back again. So these pumps, these pumps won't turn on until there's a certain amount of gas in the room. And we'll set this to send a green signal if it's below 9000. So then the water will get to the electrolyzer and what you'll see is the hydrogen will enter the top region and the oxygen will enter the bottom region. Now, with a lot of these designs with the flooded electrolyzer, you often have to prime it with the correct gases to start with so you don't end up with the hydrogen in the bottom and the oxygen in the top or like a mixture. But whenever I built it exactly like this, it, I've never needed to prime it, and I've built this design over a dozen times now in my runs. So a good advantage of this is you don't need to prime it if you build it like this. So then you can see these rooms are filling up with the gases, the electrolyzer is running. Uh, we're going to keep the dupes running for a little bit just to build up some hydrogen, and then that can start running the machine, and you'll see it will run in a minute. And again, as a reminder, you can put the buddy bud in here to get the floral scent germs. Uh, so you can dig this tile as well. So now the gas, now the gas pressure is a bit higher. So we're starting to pump the oxygen out. Uh, we don't need to vent these anymore. So what you would actually want to do is you'd want to disconnect this vent and send the hydrogen to the generator. So we're just going to wait for a bit more hydrogen to build up, and it will get to the point where this room will get full enough that it can just run itself. So now if I disconnect this. I disconnect this wire and the dupes stop running. You'll see that enough hydrogen is building up in this room that it can keep refilling the generator. And it will just keep running. 
And overall, it's power positive. So we should end up with a net with a net positive gain of hydrogen in this room. Now, one thing that should be said is you want to have a decent sort of buffer, but you can see it is running. There's enough pipe, there's enough hydrogen in the pipe that's generated to run, and it is refilling itself. Even though the liquid pump is activating and pumping the water in as well. So yeah, I'd say this is a success. Um, so we have our self-powered oxygen machine, otherwise known as a spawn. It fits pretty neatly with where you'd have all of your other four tile high rooms. And you can build it out of pretty common materials. You will see the gas occasionally leave this, uh, the liquid occasionally leave this, but it will put the hydrogen will push out and it will push straight back up. The oxygen will never retreat back into this room. And if you have more liquid tiles here, that gas pocket won't pump out so often. But yeah, now you can see this room is starting to fill with hydrogen. So now, let me show you another advantage of this design. So what you can do is you can literally just have these right next to each other. And what we'll do is we'll just... I'll show you how you, you would actually go about building this with your dupes now. So let's delete this. Uh, we'll delete these ladders as well. And then we'll put a ladder here. So what you could do, what I like to do is I like to build two of these at once. I like to do it when using a conductive wire. So the reason for this is because when, you, when you've got the duplicates, two electrolyzers will produce enough water for about 16 dupes. And that's about the size of a decently sized colony. Now, there's enough people in there to get all the jobs that you want done. So what I would do is I would actually build them right next to each other. I build the ladders like this. We'd have the we'd have the mesh tiles here. We'd put the bottle empties in just so we can load in the liquids. We'd build the airflow tiles like this because the dupes can reach all of this uh, without any issues. They can climb over the airflow tiles here without any issues. They can build the electrolyzers. They can build the gas pumps, they can build the sensors, the automation, the wiring, everything. So you can just get the dupes to come in here and build all of this in this semi-sealed room. You'll need to wait to put the right-hand side insulated tile in later. This tile is needed so that the gases don't mix, but you'll wait to put this one in. So you put your plants in here as well, you'd, you'd put all of your piping in here, so again, you just take your oxygen pipe and send it out here. So you just run each oxygen pipe under under each other because these pipes are going to be full of gas. So you're, you're going to have a lot of oxygen pipes going out. We'll hook all this up with the automation as we did before. Let's copy these settings across. Without any issues. We can put in our radiant pipe for eventually cooling it here as well. So you can just lay it in here. You can you can put regular pipe in, in the insulated tile because it's not going to make too much of a difference. And then all you need to do to extend this is use the pliers tool and then just connect the pipe through here. Uh, we'll put the regular pipe here as well because we're going to eventually seal it off with more tiles. And then you can just send it in like this. And then you can just keep running your cooling loop through there, like that, and it'll be fine. You can just bridge it over this water water pipe here. Just keep feeding the water in, and this water pipe can be used to feed up to 10 electrolyzers, so you can make this block up to 10 wide without any problems. Then the hydrogen pumps. Hydrogen pipes, what you do is you could you would send each of these to their own sort of hydrogen, hydrogen generator. So what we do is we remove this and then we'd eventually put the hydrogen generator here you could just put your vent somewhere like i don't know like here i guess and just disconnect it from the generators that's probably a better way of doing it so you just do this to vent these rooms to begin with and then hook it up to your generators which can just be placed on top of each column and then in terms of the wire you could use conductive wire for this to hook them both up and then you can just connect these straight to each other like this without it overloading. You can put your hydrogen generators here. And yeah, then we just dump our liquids in here using the bottle emptiers. Uh, so you dump it in this one first. 
So let's see. Liquids. Here we go. We have salt water. Make sure to set it to a low amount. And then put in your other water. In this case, I'll show you another another combination of liquids I use. This is for if you're building this electrolyzer build on a rhyme map where it's super cold everywhere. You would go and find some crude oil. Uh, you'd melt some crude oil from the oil biome and you put this here so it doesn't freeze when you're trying to build it. And then you'd use an oil refinery to make a very small amount of petroleum and that would sit on the top. Again, make sure it's a small quantity. Don't forget that part. So you'd fill it up and it would look like this. Um, and then once you've got all of your buildings in place, you can just tile this in. You can tile in these two first and then you can tile them up one at a time. You know, dupes can exit through the ladder. Make sure to sweep out any debris you have in here. What I like to do is just dig the whole area and fill it with ladders and then you won't end up with any debris in here by default unless you deconstruct something. In which case you'll probably want to sweep it out, just put some storage bins over here or something. So then we build these tiles up and then we can fill this left hand one with liquids as well. So we'll just put the petroleum here for now and then we'll uh, put the crude oil here. Again, make sure it's a relatively small quantity. So that can go there. And then once you've done that, you can just you just seal this off. I've missed a step, haven't I? Have I missed a step? No, I haven't. It's just a, just a bit of delay on these things. Okay, that's fine. So then what you want to do is you want to put this tile here so that it makes sure the gas is separating out properly. And then you can just brick these up. Brick this up too. You can remove your liquid liquid conveyance apparatus, whatever that may be. Stick your hydrogen generators in. And then in this case, we're just going to connect it to the manual generators again. Because you will you will need a little bit of power to get it running to start with. Right, let's turn into build mode off. Let's actually queue up the errand. And you can build this. These poor dupes. <laughs> These poor dupes do not currently have any immunities. They are here just to demonstrate how this build works. Poor lads. We've got a Harold, we've got a Frankie, we've got a Joshua. Let's enable these buildings again. Get it primed. Now the other thing to mention as well is, if you have just oxygen in this room, you can stop venting this whole build once the gas has disappeared from this chamber, which will happen first. So we'll just wait for this to vent out. That should happen very quickly. And now we don't even have to vent this bit because it's already full of oxygen. So then we just remove the we just remove the vents here. Put our pipes back. Let's uh, set it back to instant build mode for that. There you go. And then the oxygen will build up in here. Uh, we'll just copy and paste the settings across from earlier. That's fine. Set these to above 9,000. And then we can just have you run on here. And in this case, all we'll do is we'll actually just... We'll replace the liquid pump and we'll just put some conductive wire in here. So if you're, if you're putting this liquid pump in like a hot uh, water source area, you'll want to put the... You'll want to make it out of a heat resistant material like gold or even steel. Or gold amalgam or even steel. So then we'll just take the pipe and we'll just literally run it through here. There we go. And then we'll just put some power into this. So again, you can just take the power out of here. That's absolutely fine. So now I'm going to be sending some water into this. We can reactivate these. So set them to below 9,000. And then as you can see, the gases will come out in the right spots. And then this should run automatically as well. Although what we'll need to do is just stop venting the hydrogen and hook, hook them up to their proper generators. So these can go here. We'll just let the, uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep pumping the oxygen out of here to simulate the actual power use. But yeah, once the hydrogen pressure builds up, I should start getting pumped. This could be set to above 1,000 instead of above 2,000. And then we should be able to get you to stop running on this once you're actually pumping the hydrogen. 
So then if we disconnect the manual generators, then we can have it just run itself. And you'll see it generates enough hydrogen to keep running itself. We can replace these vents with high pressure vents as well. Uh, so let's just do that quickly. Just to demonstrate the concept. So now all six pumps will be running and it'll still generate enough power to run because these will fill up. Now what you could do with this build as well, if you've got a lot of these in a row, uh, one gas pump will actually handle the hydrogen output of four electrolyzers. So what you can actually do is you can just uh, you can just remove all of this. You can well we can put the wire back, but you can you can emit the top pump. Keep this tile here, and then just remove this, and then you'll see this this bit fills with hydrogen again, and the one pump should fill up well enough to run and use this. Now because of the automation it shouldn't be much more efficient than the design having more than one pump but you can put something else here if you really want. <laughs> and as you can see it's just running on its own. We're pumping the water, we're venting the oxygen, we're running the hydrogen generators and we're breaking even slash going positive on the hydrogen. So one more thing Make sure to hook up a smart battery to your hydrogen generators so that the slight bit of excess power they're generating is stored up and then that will produce a nice little power buffer so that your pumps are depowering uh, in a given moment and it just more efficiently uses the hydrogen as well. I like to set this to a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 90% charge just to make sure that if it fills with hydrogen none is lost when it's building up to the buffer point and the battery doesn't run completely empty. But do this and it will help increase the power efficiency even further. So yeah, overall this build solves the problem of early game oxygen in that you can pump your water sources from wherever they are, hot or cold. You can send them into your electrolyzers through this liquid pipe and you can separate the gases out into the oxygen and hydrogen without them getting confused. You can let them build up uh, sort of infinitely wise in terms of pressure in here or you can limit the oxygen production and just keep the water in your tanks for later use and have some buddy buds to generate the floral scent germs. And the whole build powers itself off of the hydrogen generators. You'll see some buildings depower occasionally if you're running it with the liquid pump on the same power line. I would recommend having the liquid pump be on a different power line just to make sure that you're building up a stockpile of hydrogen here and that this definitely won't break. Um, the last thing you want is a power generator that is that will stop supplying itself with resources if it runs out of power. You want to keep this water pump in a separate loop. But in a in a in a pinch, this will run off of the pump, and it still has enough power to run that. And the whole build sort of fits in the four tile high room structure without any issues. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching the video. Uh, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more oxygen not included build related videos like this and uh, we stream live on Twitch we're currently doing Rhyme Revenge where we're about 50 dupes and many many hatches and we're, we're overextending a little bit but we're, we're managing to make it work and um, yeah there's a discord as well where we talk about different builds um, there's some memes on there as well but we have lots of people talking about oxygen included on there so feel free to go check that out and uh, we'll be releasing these sort of build guide build walkthrough videos every Friday. So feel free to tune in on Friday to see the next one of these. I've got a few ideas for you. And if you have any ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.